Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be painting a loose acrylic landscape painting using a reference picture. I have an extensive class on Skillshare where I dig deep with color mixing, brush techniques, how to achieve form and dimension, how to block in shapes and much much more. So if you want to watch an extended real-time version of this painting, you can get a premium membership access free for 14 days. The link is in the description. If you've been on my channel before and haven't subscribed, make sure to do so right now. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Alifia and I hope you enjoy and subscribe by the end of this. So let's begin painting. Alright, so to begin, I will first lightly sketch out a quick drawing using the reference photo that we have here. We are going to keep it really simple and easy and, not, and only add things that will help us visualize and break down our shapes. I very rarely stick to the reference pick exact and most often I do like to add my own touch based on the composition that I prefer. So simply use a reference pick as a reference rather than copying it exactly unless you know you really want to then of course you can. Just add in whatever information that is helpful to you and that will guide you through your painting process. Do not focus on details here just impression of objects. Alright, so let's start our painting by painting the sky first. So I'm using Thalo Blue with some white and a flat brush. So using more white and a tiny bit of blue, I'm laying that down in the center of the sky while adding more white to the bottom layer and then more blue to the topmost layer. So basically you want a light gradient from dark to light. As you can see, I am doing the sky a lot different from what you see in the reference pic. I will also be adding a bunch of clouds later on, which will help you to understand dimension and also depth of perspective. Here I'm using the color Hooker's Green in Liquitex Basics, along with white and black. I'm starting with using that green with a filbert brush and laying a flat wash out in front of the landscape here. Keep in mind that we are in the initial blocking off stage where you simply add in your base color as a starting point after which we will keep you know adding in more color on top of that but for your base layer and your blocking off stage you just have to add in one color to block off each little shape that we kind of drew out. This will also help to break up the shapes we created. You may look at the reference pic and think, well, all the hills just look green, right? But if you look closely, each hill has a different variation of green from darks to lights, some with a little hint of yellow, brown, and so forth. I'm building and defining my base layer a little bit more before adding in more color and introducing like a more a, a new set of paint. Um, so here I'm just taking in some white and the and the green that we already have, so hooker's green, and just you know putting it in the sections that we already divided. You don't have to look at the reference picture exactly and copy all the colors like bit by bit. Just do what you think feels good and looks good and just go with the flow. Alright, so now it's time to introduce the second green that we will be using for the entire painting, which is light olive green in Liquitex Basics. I'm just going to be adding this color and layer that color to sections I want to be more bright.
make sure to use both sides of your brush back and forth you can you know change the direction of the way you paint as well just to add more interest i wanted that middle hill to be a darker green to uh, break up my shapes better so here i'm using both those greens with a tiny bit of black and white to create this deeper but muted green for the middle ground So here you can see um, that we are starting to define those shapes more for clarity and better visualization. I decided to add some grass to the foreground so here I'm just defining the base layer for that. Alright, so now let's begin painting all the trees that we see in this picture using hookers green, some paler blue and black. I also switched my brush to a smaller fillboard brush. Think short swift strokes while changing the direction of your brush. So now let's add in some warm tones to this painting by adding in raw sienna. You can also use burnt umber or burnt sienna if you have that. So taking a bit of raw sienna and light olive green, I'm simply laying out a few strokes to places where I see in where I see some warm tones in the pick and then also adding some of my own.
To build some form and dimension to the tree, you will need some lighter values. So I'm adding in tiny brush strokes to one side of the tree. Using the uh, tiny fieldwork brush, I'm getting in smaller shapes far back to give impressions of trees. So again, be mindful of using different sides to your brush, right? You want to use the side of the brush, you want to use the belly of the brush and so forth. Here I'm using light olive green and a tiny, tiny smudge of raw sienna to deepen the foreground a little bit. Using some white with the um, light olive green, I'm just going to make some strokes and some light highlights to the, the background, um, and especially in like far back. Uh, you know, these kind of little strokes really make a huge statement um, in your piece. and. That's usually where your eye will go first when you look at the landscape. So here I felt like it was getting a tiny bit crowded, so I added a bold layer of green to the middle ground to simplify the shape. Just one stroke and that's it. To also break up this predominantly horizontal landscape, adding some vertical strokes can really do wonders. In this case, let's add those fence to, you know, just give it, give this landscape a more of a visual interest um, to this composition. I'm using black and raw sienna to make a darker brown for the fence. Using a thin long brush to add in some very loose marks to the foreground to give impressions of grass and little tiny objects. Before we add final details to the landscape, I wanted to add some clouds to the sky here. So to start off, I will be adding our darker values first by using Thalo Blue, Black and White. I'm um, also using a round brush. I'm simply dabbing my way through to create these shapes. I'm also adding tiny dabs below this towards the horizon to indicate far away clouds. Okay, so now that we have our dark tones, let's add our mid tones by adding more white above the darker tones. Be sure to blend the two in between by going in light circular motions. Also, if you are interested in more cloud paintings, I have done a separate video on acrylic clouds. I will link that right here in this corner and also in the description if you want to check out. Oh my child, I know you heard and you can't let go. It's not your fault and you don't deserve All the bad and the hurt I'm now adding some extra white at the very top for highlights and we'll also blend that um, slightly as well. I know you tried so hard oh, I know you've done your part It's not fair 
wasted your time How much longer will you suffer in this life But don't give up I always end up pulling some of the colors from the landscape below into the clouds. I just think that it ties everything really well together. So in this case, I'm using a tiny dab of the light olive green um, into the clouds to give it some warmth and a softer touch. So just a tiny little dab in few places and then blending it. You should. Did it seem to do you any good? this tiny long thin brush it means we are approaching the end and adding in final details just little highlights and places you think will stand out use your own judgment for this and just play around with a few marks Let's peel off this tape and see what we've got here. A lot of times you will notice when you step back and observe your painting, you may notice a few things you can do differently and maybe you can add a few things to change things up a bit. So looking at this piece, I really loved that really light green section to the right side and felt like it would do well if it was slightly more balanced on the left side too. So I used Hooker's green and white um, to create this this light green color and added one stroke to that on the left side. I also felt like the tree needed some warm tones too, so I added some greens to the raw sienna to make some few marks there. This completes our loose landscape for today. An extended real-time version is available on Skillshare if you're interested to watch. It has in-depth exercises on color mixing, brush techniques, form and dimension. And also you're able to share your projects with me and others over at Skillshare, so that makes it really fun to interact with you all. And before you leave, please do not forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that like button and notification bell so that you know when I upload. Thank you all so much for watching and I will catch you very soon. Bye guys.